Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at breaking and making formations. Now this is a video I probably should have made uh, many, many, many ages ago, but there have been a couple questions about it kind of recently. So I'm like, this might be a really, really good opportunity to kind of go over sort of the, almost like a command fundamental. One of these days I will get around to basically re-recording everything and like starting a new playlist because as you probably observed, it's getting a little long. But anyway, so uh, right now we have ourselves a bunch of different groups. So we have one group here. This is a bunch of Block 52 Falcons, of course. Over on this side, we have a couple of uh, sort of nah, disjointed ones. And coming down here, we have, of course, a couple of different single ones. Now, one thing I need to throw out, uh, first of all, is if I were to grab myself an aircraft, oh, of course, you know which one I'm going to grab. Let's grab this one. And one thing you really, 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 really got to pay attention to when you're trying to make any form of groups is what they are carrying. Uh, aircraft do not like to group with things that are not them. So right now, I have myself an F-16 over on this side, which has got AMRAMs. I got this one over here. It's got some Mavericks. If I try to come over here and press G, it will go ahead and give us an interesting little warning. Uh, first of all, it will say, enforce a wing with homogenous types of aircrafts, thus splitting it into multiple wings. Or no, force the entire selection into a mixed group. Uh, this is actually a thing we did not have back in the day. So if I actually come over here and press the no key, you will get yourself a group of F-16s split, who are both uh, the Mavericks, as well as the straight air-to-air -air loadout as well. Now, this is kind of a neat little toy. You know, one of the cool things we could do now, and you know, if you look really, really carefully, you can see is now ready to be split off if I want to use them again. Now, let's talk about splitting off real quick. Let's say that I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this group here. Now, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to press the delete key. People panic, but nothing bad happens. All it does is delete the grouping itself and instantly cause everybody to kind of split off one more time. So let's go ahead and clean these two up real fast and uh, go right over here and take a look at this group. So this group right here is completely homogenous. Uh, they both have identical layouts here and they're pretty much ready to rock. But let's say we want to combine this group with this guy down here because, you know, he's feeling a little lonely. And yes, they do have the same loadouts. What I'm going to do is drag a box around the two and I'm going to go ahead and press the G key. Now, as soon as you do that, you immediately order this one to join that group. Now, that's a pretty handy tool. It's actually a really, really handy tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to group this group. Uh, remember, these were all individual ones. Now, what you're probably asking is, is it possible to take two groups like this and link them together? Yes. If I go ahead and press G, you're going to notice you're going to get this big angry error. Uh, they're going to again give you this big, big nasty warning here saying, so you test a temporary workaround, dissolve all groups, and then add it to the remaining group. What they're really saying here is they want you to click on this, press delete, click on this, press delete, select them all, press G. That's how you do that. And um, it's a pretty effective technique there. And you'll actually see very clearly that all these different ones all split up. Now, there's a couple other things we can do with groups too. Uh, for example, if I run up to unit orders here, uh, you're going to see that there's all sorts of fun little buttons down here, including one that says merge, one that says split. Now, you're probably sitting here going, but, 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 why can't I push a button? Uh, the reason is, is because this is the group selected. These are the individual units. So what I'm going to do is press 9 on my numpad real quick. And you're going to notice it actually will show you where they're supposed to be. If I click on this guy, you can actually see his, his supposed station in life is right over here, actually. And if you want to get a little more detail on that, you can actually go back to regular mode, hit the F4 key, and you can actually see where everybody's supposed to be placed. Don't worry about that right now. We're going to confuse you more in a second. So let's say I want to take these two over here, and I want to break them off as a separate group. Now, what people try to do here is they press the G key. You can push it all afternoon, and nothing's going to happen because they're already part of a group. Now, of course, if you go up to unit operations, you're also going to notice here that this particular guy has no split and no merge. These are not for groups. These are for ground units. See? Now, if you go over to group operations, however, you're going to notice we have a couple different options. So one's going to be group selected units. The other one's going to be detached selected units. So if I press group, I'm going to go back to show everybody mode. You'll see that that crew is a, did not break off. Instead, if I wanted to do that, I'd come over here and I'd press the D key on the keyboard. Now, if I go back to uh, show just the groups, you'll notice we actually have two separate groups here. We have our original group that's over here, and we have these two basically chilling here, ready to rock. So if I grab these two and press G, I will go ahead and break them up into flights. Now, another thing that's worth noting really, really carefully here is right now this one is called flight 13, and this one is called flight 14. So let's go ahead and grab this group real quick. I'm going to press 9. I'm going to go ahead and I'll select these two. I'm going to go ahead and detach them. I'm going to press G on these two, and I'll watch what happens. 13, 14, flight 15. So if I keep breaking flights up over and 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 over again, what will happen is it'll increment the number of that flight. Now, things get a little more complicated once we start doing aircraft that actually launch from a base. Oh. 
There, that looks pretty darn complicated. And we have a bunch of aircraft all flying around. Now, these are all twos. Uh, one of the things you're going to observe is the fact that they have a new ID. This is a Flight Raider 4. Coming over here, this is Flight Vegas 43. This is Flight Bubba 31. As a matter of fact, if I want to press the F1 key, or F11, I'm sorry, you can come in here and you can actually see all the different flights that were assigned to the little mission that we're doing right now, this kind of cap operation up north here. Now, this is where things get kind of confusing. So I'm going to grab this flight real quickly here, and I'm going to press the Delete key. What that's going to do is break these two units into two individual units. Now, if I unpause real quickly and I click on this one, now one of the things you're going to notice, EC is still on the original assigned mission. Now, if I press the F11 key, you will notice this group has been broken up into two smaller groups. Now, you can see this one is now turned white to indicate that that is no longer one combined group. That was the original. Now, if I grab everybody like this real quick and press the G key and go ahead and click on this one, you'll notice that we've lost our flight number here. Well, we've gone from that cool one before over to flight 56. Now, if I press this, the cool thing here is you'll actually see flight 56 is now represented inside of our missions, which is kind of a nice way to keep track of them. Uh, one of the things I've seen, you know, some really, really old school hardcore core command types do is they'll actually go through here and name each group individually. I've even seen people go so far as to name them based on like, you know, fuel remaining and stuff like that. You know, you can press F11, I can click on this group here and it'll actually select that group for me. Now, the reason this is so darn cool is I can now come in here and press the R key. Uh, we'll land at four. Yeah, I'm just, I'm making up a number here. And the reason that's so fun here is you can actually see in here exactly what you have uh, created there. We'll land at five is now located right there. So it acts as kind of a neat little way to stay organized, but keep in mind when you break the groups, rejoin the groups, break the groups, rejoin the groups, it's going to give you some interesting issues. Now, one of the fun things we can do in command, and to them, I always love stuff like this. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to delete everybody. Yeah, I'm going to press OK. I'm going to press OK. It's going to do this a few times here. Again, groups are fun. Groups are fun. Groups are fun. And I'm going to grab everybody. And I'm going to press the G key. So what we just did is we took that entire flight and we've jammed them into one mega group. Now, the reason this is going to cause my computer to get a little chunky here is because it's trying to coordinate all of these airplanes simultaneously into one mega formation as we're moving at 15 times speed here. This is actually one heck of a polygon we're generating here because this is trying to show that we have complete coverage of the entire environment around us. Now, some people like doing things like this. And of course, if I press the F11 key, you're going to be like, but that makes no sense. It says 22. You said to only do two. Yes, because I manually grouped them. So there's one more trick we'll show you with groups here. Now, normally when we develop groups here, uh, when we're at an airbase, for example, I'm actually paused, by the way, um, you can see all these people have been assigned for that little cap mission here. And uh, one of the things we can do here is we can actually override the size of the groups being launched by launching the group ourselves. Now, keep in mind, if they've already been grouped up, again, if I unpause, they will instantly group up. Uh, we can just come in here and have a lot of fun with this. Let's say I want a group of four here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say I want to do a group there. We'll come one, two, three, four. Four. We'll grab that group. I'll launch this group there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll go ahead and launch that group there. And we'll grab this group here, launch group. Now, if I order unpause, each one of those groups that I just created are now part of that group. So I'll speed up time a little bit here. And you can see some really weird things here. Uh, you can see my little group of four here. You can see my uh, other group of six here. If I come over here, you can see there's a group of two. And everybody's basically uh, ready to go. Now, if you're wondering why this crew here is just kind of being lazy, it's because they haven't finished grouping up. Uh, remember, it's the order they launch. Now, if I go ahead and pause and I press my F11 key one more time, you will see that all of the groups I just created, notice they have a nice boring name. Um, you'll notice each one of these groups here all has the size that I created. Pretty good stuff. Enjoy.